Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. This is David Demzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Before I introduce you to our guest, let me remind you about Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can pick up your copy for just 99 cents on Apple's iBookstore, on Kindle, on Nook, and on Sony Reader. It will also be available pretty soon on Kobo and Copia. Uh, no, that's not a band. It's actually two new different uh, book distributors. It's also available uh, for in paperback at Amazon and CreateSpace. All you got to do is go to financialman.com and click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Now, let me introduce you to today's guest. His name is Ryan Bales. Ryan is the CEO of Budgetable, a free software that helps you manage your finances by identifying wasteful spending and automatically managing your budget. Now, please join me in welcoming Ryan to the program. And Ryan, thank you so much for being on Financial Bin Radio. Thanks for having me, David. Oh, it's no problem. Well, let's get right to it. Now, can you give the listeners a brief description of what you did prior to starting Budgetable? Sure. Um, I started my career as a soft, in software development. Uh, I've been in software for about 10 years now, uh, mainly as a UI developer. So uh, I've been having a lot of fun doing that for, for about 10 years now. So. Was, uh, that's where I started. Okay, fantastic. Now, now, what led you to, to becoming an entrepreneur and, and going into budget, budget with budgetable, and then you know in, into the personal finance realm a little bit too? Sure. Um, well, I think my plan had always been to to start a company. It, it's kind of always been a dream of mine. So I, I've always been kind of working up to that, you know, um, as, as well as you know doing software. I've, I've always loved software as well. So. Sure. That's a, uh, another big thing. Um, so as far as starting budgetable, I, I was really just kind of looking for a um, looking for a product that I wanted to build, something that you know I thought people needed. Um, about a year ago, I started looking for for budget software online. I was I was uh, you know putting together a budget, and trying to get my finances in order, and I, I, I figured there there must be some some great software out there to to manage a budget, you know, given our, our technology and everything. And, and I, was, I was pretty surprised that there really wasn't. So uh, that's kind of the you know, the genesis of, of Budgetable. It's kind of where I uh, came up with the idea. Sure, sure. So now can you tell us a little bit about the company? How does how it all work? Sure. So so at its core, Budgetable's, uh it's budget software. It helps you manage your budget. Um but it really does a lot more than that. It it uses uh, account aggregation technology to, to connect all your bank accounts. And basically what we do is we look for, for different spending patterns uh, in the transactions. And we can find – we've written some, some cool functionality that will uh, look for wasteful spending patterns, basically. And we'll bring those to your attention. Uh, and, and this is – in addition to your budget, uh, what we do is we assign you a budget score based on based on your wasteful spending, and it kind of gives kind of gives people an idea of of how how well they are with their money, and it gives them something to shoot for. Because really, the cool thing about this is it it kind of interacts with your world in that you know if you uh, if you go to the, let's say you go to the gas station every morning and, and get, uh, you know, a Coke or something, mm-hmm. uh, your your budget score will, will reflect that. That'll probably get flagged as wasteful spending because you know it really is. Um, and and if you stop doing that, your your budget score will will be reflected, so it'll it'll go up in that case. So it, it's really kind of a cool interaction between you know your spending and um, you just the, the the basically you, your uh, your interaction with the world, I guess you could say. It's, it's really cool stuff. Yeah. So um, you guys have kind of really incorporated kind of the game mechanics or gamification almost for for budgeting yeah. or personal finance. Yeah. It, it it really it sort of it, it sort of is. I mean, it, it's kind of fun to watch your score go up and down every day. It, it gets updated every day, and it, it basically reflects your spending the previous day. And it's it's kind of because really the problem with budgeting is it's it's just it's a lot of work to keep a budget and to sure. to uh, track all your transactions and everything. 
uh, it's it's a, it's really a time suck, <laughs> and that's why people don't stick with budgets, right? Right, uh, right. You, you'll do it for a couple months, and then you'll get it's like working out, you know, it's, it's like going to the gym or something. Uh, and this this really makes it easy, I think. You know, it doesn't uh, it doesn't um, you know, make you feel bad if you go over your budget, you know, a couple bucks each month or something. That's that's really not our goal. It's really right. not effective to budget that way anyway. So we wanted to make it we want to make you know make it something that's fun and something that incorporates your actual spending habits. You know, absolutely. So, yeah. I, I feel compelled. I feel compelled to ask you how, how's your score. My score uh, last yeah. time I checked was eighty one point eight. So yeah, I guess I'm taking. This, I'm guessing this is out of a hundred. Yeah, out of a hundred. So okay, it's uh, it's it's not perfect. It, it's pretty hard to get a perfect score actually. So gotcha, gotcha. Well, hey, that, that makes it fun though, right? Something to shoot for. Yeah, right. I got I got some, something to shoot for in the future. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, my, uh, I, McDonald's have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we all have something, I'm sure, that would show up there. Um, right. But how how are you guys different than, say, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but how are you different than, say, maybe a mint.com or, or a you need a budget.com? How, what makes budgetable sure. different? Well, uh, as far as as far as far mint, I, I guess you could say, is that, is that mint, mint really focuses on account aggregation, you know, putting all your accounts in one place. Uh, it does a good job of that, but we really wanted to build an application that focused solely on budgeting. Um, and that, that's, or I'm sorry, not solely, but primarily on budgeting. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what Budgetable does. It, it puts budgeting in the forefront. Uh, it'll it'll also aggregate your accounts and show your balances and show your transactions and everything. But we really wanted to, um, you know, build something around budgeting. The software, like you need a budget. Um, it's I believe it's deskware's. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, desktop software. Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to do something on the web, and we wanted to integrate account aggregation, which I, I don't think they currently do. So, it's, um, you know, we can automatically connect to your bank, so you don't have to manually put in transactions. And that was a real gotcha. big thing for us. Gotcha. You know? Okay. So, so I guess so far, I guess you, you guys are in beta right now, correct? Yeah, we um, we've got a a few primary users in beta right now. Um, okay. Within the next two to three weeks, we're going to be rolling out. We're going to be sending out more and more beta invites. Um, so it's it's uh, we're in the in the in progress. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So so what what's the biggest mistake that you've encountered so far in in, in your business, and and how have you overcome it? Sure. Um, I think one thing that I did early on. That, that I really learned not to do is uh, is uh, you know getting back to people quickly when you're when you're running a business you get a lot of emails you get a lot of calls and there's just a lot going on uh, you know you're worrying about development and marketing and all kinds of things and one thing I did early on was I would kind of procrastinate about getting back to people um, you know getting back to uh, just people who would send me emails, and it really would have helped me to just get back to them right away, you know, just so I didn't lose that contact. And there were some instances, I think, early on where, you know, I kind of, I, I didn't necessarily burn bridges, but I just didn't respond to someone in time to really nurture that relationship. And uh, so I, I've kind of made it a habit to, to try to get back to people as, as soon as possible. And it's really, you know, it's really the right thing to do. It's just, Sometimes it's difficult when you have so much going on. So, well, yeah, I mean, as, as a startup entrepreneur, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on. You, you, you know, I guess if you subscribe to the uh, Tim Ferriss philosophy from Four Hour Work Week, you really shouldn't be checking your email all that much anyway. <laughs> right, right. What do you say? So, like once, in, once a week or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically once yeah. a week. So, yeah. other than uh, inviting some more uh, some more users to your to your private beta session here, what what are your other plans for 2012? Uh, do you have a launch date yet? What, what's going on? Well, uh, we don't have a hard launch date yet. Um, the uh, like I said, the beta is, is going to be rolling out more and more over the next couple of weeks. But uh, we've got several conferences we're going to. Um, I can't really confirm any right now because there's there's an application process and everything, but 
Um, we're hoping to do a couple big uh, presentations in, in San Francisco later on this year. So uh, it's it's a really important year for us, to say the least. No, oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely sounds like it. Now, you yeah. know, now, kind of rolling off of that, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the feedback you received, maybe from users or or some of the press, maybe that you've received? Sure, um, we've received really good feedback from users. Uh, I, there's seems seems like there's a growing excitement around the product, and we're really happy about that. We uh, we went to to FinCon uh, last year, and we uh, talked to hundreds of bloggers. About the product, and we showed them showed them some screenshots and stuff, and and got some beta sign up, and we had great feedback. We haven't we haven't really had any negative feedback so far, um, but the the big test will be in the next few weeks to see how it, see how it goes. But I think we've built something really cool, and and I, I'm excited. It, it's cool because you know you build a product, and and when it's a product that you actually use, you actually have fun using it. And you think, well, you know, <laughs> I think other people are going to like this too if I'm having so much fun with it. So, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, if it's something that you enjoy it, using, uh, that, that just motivates you even more to make it better, I guess, then, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The feedback's been good. No, well, that, that that's I mean that that's always good when you're when you're starting out and you're and you're really working hard and you're really, and you're and you're getting that positive feedback. That's just kind of the motivation, you know, the kick in the kick in the pants that you need to keep going. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's good to get feedback early on. It really is, because it'll, it'll, it'll. Uh, I, I guess that's another thing I would, I would say is, is getting feedback early on is, is really helpful because you know, if you get bad feedback, then you can say, well, I better, I better rethink this. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So right. Right. And if you get good feedback, it's like you said. You know, you, it gives you motivation. So. Yeah, I mean, and, and I guess even if you do get bad feedback, it's not the end of the world because maybe, maybe you can tweak something here and maybe it's just something you didn't think about and then, you know, it's, it's, go, it's better even going forward. Yeah, exactly. That way you're getting, you know, you can even ask the people, well, what's wrong with it, you know? What what do you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's the beauty of it. Now, yeah. can you tell us, you, you mentioned that forming some uh, relationships with some of these bloggers and, and, uh, and other personal finance experts. Can you tell us about those partnerships that you formed and how, how you, how'd you go about it other than attending conferences and how, how have they benefited you so far? Sure. Uh, yeah, one thing we did early on was we, uh, you know, like you said, we, we just formed, we tried to form a lot of relationships with, with uh, bloggers in, in our niche. Uh, a lot of finance bloggers and mom bloggers and and really just it, it's pretty easy to reach out to people you know and just tell them about your product and 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 one thing I would say is it's not always you know what can what can someone do for me you know or or what you know uh, how can they help me out it's uh, a lot of it is just you know what can I do to help them you know not not only is it you know a cool thing to do for someone but it it's going to benefit you in the future just because you know it's just kind of like karma right what what goes around comes around so i, I would say just you know just uh reaching out to people and maybe helping someone if they need if there's something we can do then we can do it and that's basically the approach we've taken and it seemed to work out pretty well so far uh, and it's you know like i said it's just it's the right thing to do Ryan, who's uh, who's mentored you guys so far, or who have you guys consulted with? Um, well, I, I would say that over the past ten years or so that I've been in, in software, I've had a lot of mentors. A lot of them, my former bosses, a lot of people I've worked with, um, have really helped me out. But, see, I think it's some people, you know, might be afraid to ask questions or something, but I I've always been the person that just asks a lot of questions and and people people love answering questions they, they love sharing their knowledge most of the time so i've always just try to keep an open mind and ask a lot of questions and it's i think, I think it's benefited me in a lot of ways um that, that's just to kind of give you an overview of my mentors is, is people i've worked with basically well, I guess to kind of wrap up here, uh, Ryan, what is one piece of advice, building off of everything you kind of just gave us, all this advice that you've received and feedback you've received, what is one piece of advice you can pass on to uh, aspiring Gen Y entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, 
I'd say the main thing w- would be be humble. You know, it's uh, it's easy to kind of get in your head that you've got the best idea, you know, and you, you're, you're the most motivated and you're going to blow the competition out of the water because you work so hard and you're you're really smart. And, and this is just kind of like patting your ego, right? But right. I think once you get out, to, get out into the field, it'll be a rude awakening if you have that type of thinking because there's a lot of smart people in this world and there's a, a lot of really smart people that are in the, the tech entrepreneur world. Um, and a lot of them have money, a lot of them have connections, and and to go to go in there thinking that you're going to blow everyone out of the water because of, of your talents and everything is if you're just going to be let down. Um, I think being humble is is really the best way to go about it. And, and if you're like that, you know it's it's going to be it's going to be easier for you in the long run. Um, you're going to be more open to other people's ideas. And you're gonna you're gonna be better at forming relationships relationships with other people. So that's uh, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess ultimately it makes you a better company, a better entrepreneur, and a and a better person, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Ryan, I, I really want to thank you for coming on. Uh, really quick, how can people get in touch with you guys? So uh, if you want to sign up for the beta, just go to budgetable.com, budgetable basically dot com. Uh, if, if somebody wants to ask me a question, they can just email me at ryan at budgetable dot com. All right. Oh, what, are you guys Ryan? on Twitter and Facebook too? Yeah, Twitter, budgetable. Uh, uh, our Twitter name, Facebook is just facebook dot com slash budgetable. So it's uh, pretty easy to find us. All right. <laughs> well, just fan- budgetable. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, I, again, I really appreciate your time and re- re- some really great stuff. It, it's uh, it, it's been a pleasure. All right, you too. Thanks a lot. All right, take care. All right, you too. Bye. All right, bye bye. All right, everyone. That was Ryan Bales from Budgetable. That is Budgetable, as he just said. Make sure you check him out at budgetable.com and on Twitter at Budgetable. I really want to thank you for your time. It, it, you know, I, I was I was kind of browsing their site a little bit. They have a great blog up there, and I think you'll you'll really learn a lot, and, they'll, and I think they'll make you laugh a little bit too. They also uh, one of their marketing methods um, is that they they like to give away T-shirts. So maybe you'll be spotting someone around around your town somewhere uh, wearing a free budgetable T-shirt. So again, guys, I want to thank you for your time, and please make sure you check out Entrepreneur Intervention. Uh, you can get it, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a dollar. You know, all you got to do is, is, is hop on the Kindle or hop on the iTunes and just pick it up for a dollar. So do yourself a favor. Learn from some 28 fantastic entrepreneurs. They're going to tell you how they grew their businesses, tell you where they messed up along the way, and how they all rectified it and continue to grow uh, going forward. I want to thank you for your time. My name is David Domzowski. I'm the founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Check us out, financialbin.com. Thank you very much. <laughs>